Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. The topic tonight will be um, consistency. Something that uh, I think is critical for success in all ways. And uh, it fits in very much with our religious direction and how we serve God. In fact, we see that um, it speaks of Aaron, Aaron the, the Cohen, Moshe's brother, first Cohen Guttel. And it says that his compliment was that Akevis Hoecha Tasuva Boker, Bes Akevis Asheni Tasubin Harabayim. That he brought the carbon tumid, the sheep that was brought every day, a continuous sacrifice. He brought one sheep in the morning and one sheep in the afternoon. That's it? And the answer is yes. Because he brought it the same way every day. He didn't change it up. He was consistent on what he did. And consistency becomes a critical part of our life. And God shows it to us in religion by virtue of the fact that, for example, the tefillin, the phylacteries that we wear on our head and on our arm, both have exactly the same four chapters in them. The head tefillin has four separate compartments. The hand tefillin, all four are wrapped into one scroll and in one compartment. And nothing in that we do religiously is an accident. So what God is telling us is, when it comes to thoughts, we can all have different thoughts, the four compartments. But when it comes to action, when we do a mitzvah, when we do something that God commands us, we have to be consistent. We all do it the same way. And this becomes very important. In fact, some people complain of prayer. We all pray out of the same prayer book. We say the same prayers over and over again. And is it really the same? And the answer is if you have 300 people praying out of the same prayer book, each one of them is praying differently. Not only is each one praying differently, but on each day that we pray, the prayers are different, even though we say the same words, because our thoughts are different, our experiences are different, our joy and our sadness are different. And all of that influences the way that we think about the prayers, the concentration that we have of trying to get better and better at what we do. In fact, we see this in sports, that in sports, consistency becomes the key. A good athlete becomes a robot. He learns how to stand in the same place, do the same thing over and over and over again. And he practices that again and again and again. The greats, someone like Michael Jordan in basketball, after a game, he would go to the practice court, just shoot. Again, practicing, consistency. Someone who was as great as Tiger Woods in, in golf, who I thought once Tiger Woods came on the scene that no one would ever win a championship again. He was so good. And then the physicality of the world, he got involved with all of those things that are the Yetzirah's game, the side of evil, of enjoying the world, taking all the luxuries that it brings. And then all of a sudden he stopped practicing. And when he stopped practicing, he becomes a has-been, not anywhere near what he was. Keeping that consistency, staying focused, doing it over and over again, and not losing the intensity of what you do becomes the key of what God wants, expects from us, and trains us to do by virtue of the Torah that he's given us that does not change, that forces us, again, to have discipline, but that discipline gives us consistency. In fact, we can learn from God's world. The whole world is a computer program. And it works excellently. The sun always comes up in the east and, goes and sets in the west. We know when the seasons are. It amazes me, not always with great efficiency, but the weather's, we can predict basically what's happening. And we know when the seasons are going to change. We, we see what this computer program is. And as long as that's the case, life's simple. We know that in the winter we're going to have to dress in a certain way, in summer in another way. We, knew what, we know what to prepare for. We know what we're going to have to do as far as money, as far as heating or air conditioning or what it might be. We know the seasons will cost us what it is. Then at the same time, when do we get 
confused. When do we come? We move out of our comfort zone. We move out of our comfort zone when we we move out of our comfort zone when we have tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis. When things are out of the ordinary, then turmoil comes in. Now, it's important in sports. The sports is an aside. It's a game. But it's, it's, it's critical in how we relate to people. I was in the U.S. Army. I was in basic training. I had a sergeant, a southern sergeant. And one day he'd come in and he'd be very jovial and he'd kibitz with us. Very friendly. The next day he'd come in very stern no nonsense. And we were really a disaster as a, as a platoon. There was the fourth platoon, I'll never, never forget, there was a black sergeant, ex-Marine, and he was tough as nails, but he was always tough as nails. They did everything better, everything, because he never let up. He was the same every day, tough, but fair, consistent. And this becomes the key in every type of relationship that we have. Not just with God. Again, you have to remember that the Torah is an instruction manual for us to live our lives. When we have that consistency, when we develop even a routine, and we'll talk about that in a second, but that consistency allows us to get to work together with people better. If people know who and what we are, if we're not what we prefer is flaky, that if we're consistent, consistently the same all the time, then people know how to deal with us. If you're a boss dealing with your employees, and your employees dealing with you, if you are the same all the time, it's not your job to come into work as an employer and wear your problems on your sleeve. You need to come into work every day the same way, regardless of what's happening on outside of your life. And then your employees will be better. Everyone underneath you will work better, feel better, do a better job. Because of your consistency. Children. If you're inconsistent with children, you send them a very awful message. Because they don't know where to go and what to do. Because it works one time, it doesn't work others. When a child sees that if I go left, I'll always get slammed down. And when I go right, I'll always get complimented. I'll always be successful. The child will go right. And occasionally he'll try left and get slapped down again. And no, right is the way I have to go. And it'll work. And what you've done by doing that, being a teacher, being a parent, you help a child grow in a very positive way. You reinforce that consistency. And he's able to be the best that he can be by virtue of that. And especially when you have two parents or two partners in business. One can't go one way and one the other. That there needs to be a consistency, a game plan on how you're going to deal with problems. Because again, otherwise, just like everything in life, everything goes to its lowest point, to its weakest point. Employees know how to do that. Children know how to do that. And the truth of the matter is very little difference. You can be a good employer. You can be a good parent. Because it's really one and the same. Marriage. Same thing. If two spouses, if your husband and wife, know each other and know what they do and they're consistent about it, you can get better. That's great. But even if you don't get better, but if you know that this bothers my spouse... You just don't say it, as long as it always bothers them. If it's in and out, then all of a sudden you're going into uncharted ter territory, and storms are happening all the time in the relationship. In fact, part, it's interesting, the Torah refers to Adam, the first man when he had relations with his wife, as Adam Yoda es Chava. And first man knew his wife, Chava. It doesn't say he had relations with her, he knew her. That becomes the key. Consistency. You can't know something that's inconsistent. Because if it's inconsistent, it has no rules and regulations to it. When things, I mean, that's what all mathematics and science is about. Rules and regulations. Things that follow a pattern. And then you can deal with something. 
And this becomes the importance of a routine. People that have no routine are disasters in life. You can't be defensive in life. You can't react to everything that happens. What you need to do is have a game plan. Don't misunderstand me. Things will change. I, in fact, every, I always say, I get up every morning, I know I have a problem. Once I find it, everything else is okay. But you need to have a game plan. You need to have a routine, a time when you get up, a time when you pray. And that's what, it, that's what, that's what religion's all about. We pray at a certain time in the morning. It has to be within certain parameters. And then in the afternoon, and then in the evening, and the blessings we make here and there and what we do, everything is based on a routine. When a person follows a routine, there's structure. And that structure gives a person strength. I'm in the restaurant business. I remember when I was a kid, there was an old man. He was 73. He had an inner ear problem. He could barely stand. But he never cut himself because he had learned how to handle a knife. And in his sleep, he would always hold a knife right, cut with it right, and never cut himself even though he couldn't stand right. But he didn't cut himself. Because of this good habits, this consistency of doing it the right way all the time. And the worst part about it is that if you learn how to do something correctly and you do it that way all the time, everything is easy. If you learn how to do it incorrectly, there's nothing harder than unlearning something that you've learned and then doing it the right way. So not just learning it, but they could then staying consistent and doing it that way all the time. And then it becomes second nature. Again, that's what an athlete does. To the point of where he can shoot that shot with his eyes closed. He doesn't have to even look. And when he can do that, then he becomes successful. So do we. Even if you have a bad routine, guess what? Terrific. Because you can tweak it. You can make it better. If you have no routine, you're going to be a disaster. You know, I mean, God protects the fool, and you can hope that he follows that belief. But for the most part, the world works in a natural order. You need to be consistent. You need to, you need to know what you're doing. The world needs to know what it's doing. Everyone around you. Otherwise, what you become is a storm everywhere you work, every place you go. You bring chaos to everything that you do. But if you're consistent, then what you can do is tweak it. If you see something's not working, you change it. Because it's always the same, so you know what you're working on. If you allow yourself to be a sailboat, so to speak, and let the wind blow, and then you react, you have to wait for the wind. The wind dictates to you. You need to be a powerboat, so to speak, and dictate to the world. That you do things in a certain way and then things will follow around you. Or if you know how things are, you can adapt to it by being consistent. Because if things, you know, I always say, I have no problem when a skunk stinks. When a squirrel stinks, I have a real problem. Because I expect the skunk to stink. That's not a problem. That's who a skunk is. See that white stripe? Get out of the way. <laughs> but if you see a squirrel, you don't expect them to pick up his tail and, and, and skunk you. That's difficult. Where there's consistency, you can deal with it and avoid problems. Avoid the problems that you give to people and avoid the problems that others give to you. So let's remember that we need to be like Aaron. That I kebis a chad tasba boker, I kebis a sheni tasba boker, that he brought that sheep in the morning and the afternoon every time consistently, didn't change up. And that's what we need to work on. Sounds boring, it's wonderful. Because it makes your life much simpler. And why is it that we feel that we have to convolute everything, we have to make everything difficult? Why not just make it simple? And get that routine and make our lives a much easier journey to get to that final end that we're all searching for. Happiness. God bless you. Have a good Shabbos.